PlayStation says nah to E3, and a new Xbox One is on its way. Let's jump into it. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode number 22 of Diggity, a video game podcast. I'm your host, Jeff James. As always with me is the bodacious, the crustaceous, the ludicrous, lucius, luscious, Brody. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm good, man. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm really good. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, at Diggity Podcast, and please subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Radio Public, wherever you listen. We're there. You can subscribe to us. You can listen to us. We can be friends. Uh, and today's podcast, speaking of friends, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com. You get access to over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. I personally recommend getting the audiobook Creativity Inc. It's kind of an insight into Pixar and how they maintain creativity and business. And yeah, I actually just gave you a, a decent book to listen to, not Donald Trump, Donald Trump poetry like you know last week. <laughs> so there you go. For the people out there that, uh, you know, Say, Jeff, you know what? You're selling this, but you're not telling me any good books to read. It's a really good book to read if you're uh, if you're kind of in a creative space. Um, honestly, even if you just have a business that's not creative, it kind of injects a little creativity into what might otherwise be um, a boring job and might spice it up a little bit. So head on over to audibletrial.com slash diggity to get your free audiobook download and 30-day free trial. As always, thank you to the Amazon team and to the Audible team for sponsoring the podcast. So um, there's a new segment on the show <laughs> as Brody giggles um, <laughs> there's a long time inside joke between me and Brody uh, and DJ Khaled um, I want I found DJ Khaled's Instagram uh, a long time ago he's pretty prevalent and, and mainly popular on Snapchat that's how he became popular um, from the social media scene but on Instagram um, <clears throat> the great thing about Instagram is it literally just says Jeff send you a sent you a snap uh, you don't know who it's from or, or like a story and you don't know who it's from. And every time Brody opens up, it's generally DJ Khaled saying something incredibly wise and full of wisdom. <laughs> so, uh, Brody, what's our words of wisdom from DJ Khaled today? Go spend some money for no reason. Hell yeah, it's Black Friday. That's smart. <laughs> yeah. God, he's so wise. So wise. Holy hell. What would we ever do without him? Nothing. We'd be lost as a civilization. <laughs> We'd be, we'd be absolutely lost. Uh, do you want to run into games coming out this week? Yeah, absolutely. So Favorite. on November 20th, which is tomorrow or today when you're listening to this, Ooh. sorry. Ooh, I slipped. Uh, Battlefield 5 on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Farming Simulator 19. Hell Holy yeah. Shit. Uh, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, Jurassic World Evolution, Secrets of Dr. Wu DLC. <laughs> Sorry. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's coming to PC, PS4, uh, Xbox One. Uh, Nidhogg? Yes, Nidhogg 2. Okay. Nidhogg 2 on Switch. Mm -hmm. Marvel Spider Man Turf Wars DLC this on is crazy. PS4. I feel like the yeah. other DLC just came out. What the fuck? They're fucking powering right through that. Hell man. yeah, they are. Uh, and then we got what Beat Saber for PS4. Fuck? It's called Beat Saber? Yeah, you've never seen that? No. That's where, where you're like... Uh, you beat up? Like, no. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the, the rhythmic game where you're swinging the lightsabers. It's like the VR... You oh, seen that? yes. Come I've, on. Seen, I've seen that. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, that's I mean, what it's called. It looks like An you're directing uh, in, uh, a fucking plane. <laughs> yeah. While you're playing yeah. it, right? Either that or an orchestra. One of the two. Right. Uh, and then you got Warframe on Switch. And nice. then on November 22nd, you have Woodpunk. Wow. And that's your games for God. the week. You know what? Really, Happy it's, great, it's great to know that people are really giving, you know, after all these years, they're giving Steampunk such a big outlet. It's great to know that Woodpunk is now making, a, you know, a hit. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time coming, man. I do, mean, Woodpunk was just, just around, around the corner. with. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man, I can't. I can't fucking yeah, wait for cork God. punk. Honestly, cork punk. Man, I'm waiting for bamboo punk personally. Oh shit! Didn't even yeah. think about that. Maybe another twenty years. <laughs> yeah. Maybe another twenty years. Maybe they have chess pieces made out of wood. 
Yeah. No wonder that go. civilization didn't survive. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Xbox Black Friday deals. Uh, I went through the list of Black Friday deals and picked and curated my list of what I think is some really hot deals. So as um, a famous used car salesman in the area that we live in would say, I'm passing the savings on to you, bitch. <laughs> Uh, Black Ops 4 <laughs> Black Ops 4 uh, Is $47.99 That's a pretty good deal Because generally speaking it's about $59.99 uh, These are all live right now by the way On Xbox uh, Rainbow Six Siege is only $18 Portal Knights is $10 That's also on Game Pass though um, If you don't have that And Game Pass is a dollar still for your, first, for your first month Which is an incredible deal uh, Monster Hunter World is $25 Assassin's Creed Odyssey Forty dollars and nineteen cents. That one's tempting, man. I'm. Ugh. I got too much to play. Nineteen Otherwise, cents. Otherwise, I jump on it. I don't understand the weird. Yeah, that one. Math I don't on know. this. Um, Bastion is three dollars and seventy-five cents. Uh, Borderlands: The Handsome Collection is nineteen dollars and eighty cents. Uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered is eight dollars. Uh, the Crash and Sane Trilogy is only twenty-five ninety-nine, which is. I mean, that's a pretty fairly new game. Yeah, fairly new. Um, Diablo Three Eternal Collection is nineteen dollars or nineteen ninety nine. Sorry, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is thirty. Another good deal. Goat Simulator three bucks. Can't go wrong with that. Goats, fucking oh, goats. Yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five nineteen forty nine. God damn, that was an unfortunate <laughs> sentence. Oh shoot. <laughs> uh, um, Grand Theft Auto Five. God damn it. Nineteen forty nine. Can't go wrong with that game. Uh, Human Fall Flat. Great game. Seven dollars fifty cents. Life is strange. It's like the whole package, everything, $4. Great game. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, $15.99. Need for Speed Payback, 12 bucks, And The Witcher 3, 20 bucks. That's a great lineup. Good job, Major Nelson. Oh, yeah. And Xbox that team, was, uh, you really killed it. You you really nailed it on the curation there, too, buddy. Thank you. You think I did? Yeah. yeah. I picked no, through. seriously. Not Those to are say that the games. other games. I Here's my thing. I think all the games that were in it were great. Everyone deserves oh, a participation yeah. trophy. Um <laughs> Even Fish Simulator, you know. <laughs> All right, let's not get carried Nothing away. gets me fucking going like that. Um, <laughs> but, no, I looked at these as, like, what's the game and, like, the, pretty much the value from it. So I yeah. figure, you know, this is this is the list. This is, No one can make a better list. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can this make a better list. This is the list. <laughs> this is it. Oh, don't shit. listen to anybody else. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that Greg guy. Who cares about that great guy? Don't listen to that other Jeff guy <laughs> on Achievement Hunter. He's not going to tell you deals. He's not going to tell you. He's just going to tell you to sign up for Rooster Teeth first, <laughs> which is a great deal. But anyway, <laughs> <a> great deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, shit. these are my Black Friday so, deals. Those are the best. <laughs> so what did you get into this weekend, buddy? We we kind of cut that out of our Thursday segment. And, we did. Uh, it kind of just we, left. We, I don't know what happened. Yeah, it just kind of left. It just disappeared one day and never came back. Is that so, because I kept saying I was playing Rabbids? <laughs> I think so, and then and you lied to our entire fan base because I don't think you ever touched it. I, I touched Rabbids. Uh huh. I touched Rabbids. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, fine, fine. So, what'd you play this weekend? Well, we played a little bit of uh, Battlefield Five through EA yeah, Access. Man. Yes, sir. Um, played a little bit of Red Dead. Uh, turned on a little bit of Mario Kart Eight. On the switch, and played a really shitty Family Guy mobile game on my phone while I was nice. waiting for something. Hell yeah! And that's it, man. That's, that was my weekend. Thrilling, yeah. yeah. Just yeah, a blast. That's really exciting. Yeah. Oh, I played a little bit of NHL. Uh, Did you? Eighteen. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. It was hockey. Yes, the, it was like playing. Is. It was like playing NHL 17. Oh, really? Right. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Who to thunk? Yeah, it was great. They they added um. They added more slippery ice this year, into the game. Oh, more icy ice. Yeah, more icy ice. Perfect. It's actually a DLC pack. <laughs> it's actually a season pass. You can only get it with a season pass. No, you get it. Get it. And it comes in May. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you play uh, this weekend? Before we get obviously into the Battlefield Five discussion, what did you what did you um, play? Well, I picked up <clears throat> Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Um, 
So I got into that a little bit. I didn't make it too terribly far, but Hand just kind of played around. Hand cramps. Yeah. Uh, I can't, dude, I can't use the fucking little Pokeball thing. It hurts. I don't like it. And there's there's not all the buttons that you need. Like, if you go into your party and try to uh, change one of the Pokemon out, you can't. <laughs> it, it doesn't let you. It drives me nuts. So Seems like an I, oversight. Yeah. It should have added, like, one or two more buttons on that. That thing, sucks but. balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it Poke does. Balls. Uh, but um, got into that. Um, I actually didn't play any Red Dead this weekend. Oh snap! Um, really? Yeah, no. I I don't know what it was. I just I wasn't feeling it this weekend. I guess. So uh, we played a little bit of Battlefield Five, and we'll actually dive into that a little bit later. Yep. Um, I actually played a little bit of Call of Duty, and uh, we played some Overwatch. Oh, I that's tell the right. beautiful people about our time with Overwatch. That's right. Oh. It started out very positive and went very negative very quickly. <laughs> well, as if one does when playing Overwatch. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's yeah. a great game. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a fun game. Uh, we basically wanted to go on there. Um, I, I mean, originally, Craig was like, hey... The new character's up, and then we went on there. Hey, the characters, the new character's not up. Yeah, it was up, but just not for on. We were bamboozled. Not for um, competitive play. We were bamboozled. so he lied to us because yep. Craig's a sack of shit like that. One I day can say that because he's not going to listen. He's not going to listen. Oh well, yeah, that's what makes him a sack of shit. Right. We can talk as much shit about him as we want because he's never going to. He's never going to hear this. He's never going to hear this. One day, <laughs> the hope has become become mildly popular. And someone reaches out to Craig over Twitter and just says, Craig, you're sack shit. And like five people <laughs> say it to him. no reason. For no reason. He has no idea why. Yeah. No, that's... No I explanation, mean, nothing. That's just... all anyone wants to do with power on the internet. <laughs> what else yeah. do you need? What else do you need? Um, yeah, no, Overwatch was good. Um, it was pretty good. I, we I had a good time with a long it. Time. We were all like, oh my God, we're so shitty. And then like three, three minutes went past. And we're like, oh my God, we're great now. And then yeah, we, we and then we got it. our asses kicked. The other <laughs> and then four we matches. We lost five games in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> to be fair, they were placement matches, but good god, oh, we were placed I don't in know. hell. Yeah, we were placed in hell. That was bad. It was rough. Oh, good god! But yeah, most we, of we them were pretty close. At least, I mean, there was yeah. a few blowouts, but I mean, eh. <sighs> it just—I don't know. <laughs> The problem was, too, we had people keep leaving our parties. Yeah. Uh, and I don't get it. I don't under, like, I don't leave parties, so I don't know what the, like, the ban hammer is. I don't know what, like, what power the ban hammer brings down, like, if it's, like, a two-hour, you know, I think for something. Overwatch, I, th- I think it depends on how many times you've done it and how frequently you do it. Um, I think the first time's, like, 15 minutes, though. I could be wrong. I could be way Is that long. really going to d- deter somebody? Probably not. Like, I, I mean, it should be like. But the thing a week. is, like, it it's kind of stupid anyway because it it suspends you for fifteen minutes and you still take the penalty regardless. So, what do you gain by leaving a match anyway? I mean, you're not saving time. You might well, as well just welcome, finish the match and take the hit the just like everybody else. It's it's welcome, fucking stupid. Welcome to the just internet. Fucking stay. Oh, absolutely. I think when I, I don't know if this is the same now, but for League of Legends, like when I was playing at college, like when I first really become hot, um, I got banned for like three days once because my internet fucked up. Oh, like damn. Two days or something like that. Some like it's crazy a number. I don't even think they do it anymore because it was just insane. Like I, I got banned and I didn't play it for like two weeks. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you, Riot. <laughs> and then I went back after two weeks because I remembered. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Now that I'm done midterms. Great. And go back to you know procrastinating and playing league. This would be great. And I went back to it. Um, anyways, something totally not related to anything. The Golden Joystick Awards were happened, and the winners have been announced. So I'm just going to run through this. Um, and this might kind of give us a look into, well, some of these categories will give us a look kind of, I think, honestly, into the Game Awards. I would imagine so, yeah. Which, by the way, you and I still are discussing stuff, but there's a possibility and a chance that we're going to be live streaming the Game Awards and kind of just sitting there with a beer or two talking about what we're seeing. Um, Fuck that. I got moonshine, man. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa. 
Okay. Um, Golden Joystick Award winner. So for best story, sports, uh, bleh, for best storytelling, uh, Golden Award won that. Uh, Fortnite uh, won best competitive game. I'll let that sink in. Uh, <laughs> Monster Hunter World got got best cooperative game. I'll let that sink in. The game where it's fucking impossible to join as a party. Got best competitive game or <laughs> cooperative game. <laughs> Oh god, yeah. Wonderful bad. game. Wonderful game. Fantastic game. Fucking terrible to team up with somebody. Yeah. Uh best visual design went to God of War. Best indie game went to Dead Cells. Sweet. Best audio went to God of War. The still playing award went to World of Tanks, which I feel like that's like a fucking <laughs> I feel like that's a weird award to get. It's like Yeah. Still playing World of Tanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost a backhanded compliment. In a yeah, way. exactly. Uh, best performer was Brian Deckert as Connor from Detroit Become Human. Uh, esports game of the year was Overwatch. Uh, best VR game was The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim VR. <laughs> God damn it. Hell uh, yeah. Studio <laughs> of the year was Sony Interactive Entertainment, Santa Monica Studio. That's a studio that did God of War. Uh, best new streamer slash broadcaster was uh, Diggity. Whoa! No, it was uh, Brian Deckard and Amelia Rose Blair. Uh, mobile game of the year was PUBG on mobile. Um, PC game of the year was Subnautica. PlayStation game of the year was God of War. The Xbox game of the year was Forza Horizon 4. The Nintendo game of the year was Octopath Traveler. Makes sense. Breakthrough Award was Unknown Worlds. The most wanted game is Cyberpunk 2077, which that's also really weird. This is kind of like, hey, I'd fucking like this. You yeah, it. it's a weird award, I guess. I mean, like, it's an award for building the most hype in a year, I guess, which is bizarre. Yeah. Uh, Critics' Choice Award went to Red Dead Redemption 2. No surprise there. The Lifetime Achievement Award went to Hidetaka Miyazaki, um, who works for From Software. Uh, the Outstanding Contribution uh, Award went to the Xbox team for the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which that's awesome. Fantastic. And the Ultimate Game of the Year. Not Game of the Year. Fucking ultimate game of the year <laughs> went to Fortnite Battle Royale. I I think the reason they called it the ultimate game is because they had a PS4 game, a Xbox uh, game of the year, yeah. and then also the. Yeah. But still, regardless, it's Fortnite. Which Fortnite? Yeah. All right. Hit it up. Play it. It's fucking everywhere. Okay, uh, Brody, you've got a interesting piece of news. Uh, so the rumor is going around again as uh it tends to on the internet but there supposedly is an xbox in the works that is going to uh come out next year that does not have a disc drive so this is uh the the theory behind this is that it's to cut costs to get more people in and buying Mm -hmm. these consoles and maybe um take a step in the right direction or in the direction of getting away from discs as Mm -hmm. our uh, main way of buying games. So uh, yeah, this is kind of an interesting one. Honestly, I, um, I think it's true. I I fully believe it would be true. I don't see why wouldn't it? Yeah. It makes total sense. I mean, good God. You can just the amount of money. I mean, the, the thought is too, that it basically sells for one ninety nine going forward in that from what I've seen. Um, which mm-hmm. makes sense. I would mean that's expensive the disc drive if that's the case, but you know, um, cause it's a Blu-ray you, player, right? At the end of the day, right? Yeah. Do you think this is going to be uh what like the Xbox One X or I mean sorry the the One S or the One X or which model oh, of the Xbox do you think, think this is gonna be? I think it'll just be the One S. I think this is gonna be like your Slim. This is like every okay. you know, um, yeah. It's like the exit right from the right from this gen of console. That's kind of what I assumed. I just kind of was curious what your opinion on that was. I don't think I they do the X. The one S. I feel like the X needs... I feel like the X's internal still wouldn't... like They wouldn't be able to bring it down. Like, I think 199 is a compelling price to get someone to purchase something. And I think oh, yeah. if you did with Xbox One X, it would still be... Like, an Xbox One X is what? 499 Yeah. So, you know, let's... Or let's, I think it's 450 now, but yeah. So let's say you, know, like you bring that, it down a hundred bucks, three fifty, yeah, maybe compelling. I don't know. Uh, you get it in the into like 
three hundred or so, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. Like uh, for whatever reason, that jump between three hundred and four hundred is that one's a a huge like deal breaker. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, no, I think great. if they could if they could get the price of the the one X down, I think their sales would go up big time for sure. But oh yeah, I th- I think even with this, I think this is going to be a big deal for them, and I think it's going to make them some serious money. I don't, I, I think it's awesome. Yeah, no, for sure. Do you think Sony does something similar? I do not think so. Really? Not. I, I can see it next generation, but do I don't think... you see them coming s- out with at least like one more maybe slim version? Perhaps it has, still has the disk drive, but maybe it's reshaped in some way or, or just smaller packaging? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see another uh, iteration of the PS4 before the next generation or not. Because we saw... I, I'm thinking not. Three but. PS3s, right? So the big fat one, then we went down to like the matte plastic one, and then we went to one where it just like slid open, where it didn't have any sort of um, like mechanical drive or anything like that. You just like slid the top open, pop the disc in, and you slid it over. Do you remember that? It looked like a George Foreman grill. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had three of those, and for the Xbox 360, we had three of them. We had the original one. Then we had the Slim, which is a really good looking console, I think. I think to this day, I think the Xbox 360 was a brilliant looking console. It's just so cool. Like, stands up, you know. Yeah. The power button's so big on it. Like, it just was awesome. Um, and then we went from the Slim to a, another Slim that was, instead of touch buttons, all physical buttons, and was like a shiny black plastic, like a cheaper plastic. So we went through three mm-hmm. iterations, and this would be this would be three, I guess. It's kind of cheating it because I mean you had your Xbox Day Ones, then you went. Now it's just Xbox It'd One be, S is all you can get now. It'd be more like four iterations, really, at this point. Oh, that's if true. Because this X. does come out, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. And then the X, and then this one would be like a downgrade, where I guess it would just be like the S. but without a disc drive, which makes sense. Yeah. There's just so many people out there that would probably be okay with that. Oh, I'm sure. And the there's majority. a lot of people that don't understand why people buy physical, which, I mean, to each their own. I personally like to buy physical, but um, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't think this would be the console for me, but, I mean, if the price is right, the price is right. And, right. And any more, I mean, there's usually great deals on digital stuff anyway, and that's when I end up buying most of my digital content. I mean, it, Oh, it's hard to find sales it, on physical discs now. Yeah. I mean, if if I can, I try to buy it physical most of the time. But um, since since nobody's sending us their games, I guess we'll just have to keep buying them. And <laughs> <laughs> one day, uh, one day. You know what I'm interested yeah. in about this though is What's up? Um, how GameStop takes us. I I've I've heard talks about that. I so think like, will they sell? This it? could really hurt GameStop in the long run. Well, sure. Like, will they sell it? Will they ever put it on sale? I don't know how the GameStop sales work for consoles. I don't know how it works for games, but I don't know if, like, Microsoft mandates that it goes on sale and it just happens or if, like, they party up together. But, like, selling these, to me, uh, hurts them. Oh, yeah, Who absolutely. the fuck is coming in there to buy a piece of cardboard for a game? Like, it's not going to yeah. happen. Like, the only reason you go into GameStop is to purchase either a console or, like, a physical game. Like all the T-shirts, right. all that shit. That's just like that's just there to purchase, you know, while you're there. Hey, I'll pick up this pop this character. filler shit. Yeah. yeah, right. So I think it's gonna really hurt them, and it'll be interesting to see how that relationship continues. Yeah, what kind of what kind of business model is it when you sell a product that makes like ninety percent of your products obsolete? <laughs> like it's just yeah, a weird and it doesn't concept. even really make GameStop money. No, I think they make no, like really just a doesn't. little bit of money off of each console sell. But the, right. they're kind of just like Xbox. They're just, you know, like Microsoft doesn't make any money off of the selling of, of these consoles. It's just the hope that people buy games and they get the royalty from the games, the 30% right. of the game. But, yeah, I don't know. It'll be pretty – this will be very weird if this goes through. it would be super, super weird to see what GameStop does. I think – I, I, I kind of wonder if this isn't a just um, – not only just the, like something to get more people to buy more Xboxes, obviously. I, I almost wonder if this is a test of sorts, because you, we've heard quite a bit about you know Project Scarlet possibly being um, 
I, I I personally don't think it will actually be you know without a disk drive. I think digital content's not going to take over completely this next yeah. generation. Yeah. But I I do kind of wonder if this is a little bit of a test. You know, dip oh, your feet sure. in the water and see what you're going to get. Oh, and, I guarantee uh, it. Absolutely. Which I, would, I think is smart by them, honestly. Instead yeah. of just jumping in like they did with you know <laughs> the Xbox One in the beginning, like oh well we want it to be everything. You know, no, I, I, I think it's. A, Never What's understood up? why, like, I don't know. I feel like Microsoft could have so much, and same with Sony, could have so much more control over their console and selling it if they took a page of, like, Apple. Where, like, Apple Apple still sells its stuff. I mean, you can buy Apple stuff from Walmart, but it's, like, right. um, it's, like, own dedicated, like, Apple kiosk and all this stuff. It's not, like, jammed on this, like, glass wall in the electronic section of a Walmart. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, like, because this doesn't just hurt GameStop. I mean, this hurts anyone who sells a console, like a Target or Walmart. It hurts right. all of them. So oh, yeah. I wonder if... I wonder if this is just sold online. I mean, that would... Or in like a Microsoft store, mm-hmm. at a Best Buy, like in a kiosk. Or even a Best Buy. I'd heard a Best Buy. Like whoever I sells it except for Microsoft, it hurts them. Well, I, I think maybe a Walmart. It, it's really not much of an effect on Walmart. Walmart yeah. doesn't make most of their money off of games and and uh, consoles. I mean, so I, I could see like a Walmart and your Targets and Myers and uh, like just your regular stores like that. I, I could see them selling it, mm-hmm. but obviously, you know, like your your GameStop or your Best Buys even. Um, and I I can even almost see Best Buy doing it, but I. I just because they have so many other products as well, so it's not like, I mean, they'd still be taking a hit, but it wouldn't be the worst. Um, I think I, I think GameStop would be the bi- the big hang up, honestly. I mean, any of your dedicated game stores. And the thing that does kind of suck about this, and I mean, the writing's been on the wall here, but your local like uh, brick and mortar. Uh, game stores you know like we we have one down where we are and uh and it's it's actually pretty solid you know but once we start getting to the point where everything's digital i mean you're gonna start seeing a lot of these local businesses go under and that i mean that sucks i mean i i I don't care so much about gamestop going under but uh to see some of the the local businesses especially because we've had where we live you know we've had a couple different uh iterations of uh, local games, sh- game shops, and they mm-hmm. most of them just end up failing. And um, so I, I think they, I'm sure they see the writing on the wall, but still right. sucks to see. No, I think it'll be cool. I think, uh, I think Sony does do something similar. Think so? Yeah, I think Sony does. Something they're already similar. at, they're already at what three iterations as well? Because they had the original PS4, they had the PS4 Slim, and then they've had the uh, Pro, yeah. PS4 Pro, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, they've had they're the third iteration. Yeah, I, I think they, I think they come up with something like this. I think they come up with something yeah. like this, and I expect it to be like super small. Like yeah, I, real I, small. Uh, I mean, if you think, think about like, the disc drive, the disc drive is the size of a disc. Like it has to be able to hold the disc, right. right? So you get rid of that. Like I would assume that the Xbox, whatever it's going to be called, um, perhaps it's just called Xbox One, and that's the new one that you get or something like that. Um, mm, maybe. Uh, I expect that to be smaller. I mean, yeah. why would why would you use more plastic? It's just costing you money, right? You know, if you can fit it smaller. But yeah, I think that make that, it like, like the size of like the uh, what the that NES Wii? classics or no, like the not quite remember, that small. You remember the Wii when they were on the last iteration of the Wii and it was like a top loader, and you like, yeah or a clamshell, sorry, and you popped open the top and then you put the disc in instead of like being yeah. vertical. I like that size. Okay, I think Meh, personally that wouldn't be. And too then bad. I think like they'll do. The thing is with this, like if they're gonna sell something like that, they have to really go hard on the like the storage capacity in them right absolutely but i mean an all digital console has to have the room for the storage right but in the past i mean they yeah they launched with what goes. like five gig fucking xbox 360s remember that 
Yeah, that was rough. That was real you rough. One game on it, it was full. And then you either had to go yeah. get an external hard drive or buy, you know, the uh, clip-on memory card for the top of the 360. Mm-hmm. I went so. through a few of those. I, I had to buy bigger uh, of the, like, clip-on hard drives for the top of them. So, yeah, I could it's imagine. ridiculous. I could imagine them doing a small amount. Yeah, I, I can see that. It'd be interesting. Why to see not? It. Whatever. Cool. Um, the main meat of this episode, I'm bringing up right now, Battlefield Five. So, uh, you and I both played a couple hours of Battlefield Five, um, and we'll probably yeah. play a little bit after we were finished recording here, maybe. I would um, imagine so. Um, and we were pleasantly surprised. So we Absolutely. played it on. You can play it today. Um, when this podcast goes up, you can put you can play it today, starting today. Um, we've been able to play it early on because um, we have EA access, um, and uh, it's 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 good. It like, is holy good. shit, it's good. Like a couple of, uh, and I want to make this clear. Like on the podcast before, we kind of like we didn't bash it, but we definitely had a lot of doubts on it, and we were very scared about it, and worried about it, and whether or not we're going to pay for it or not. And I totally take it back. Like I think it's a yeah. good game. I think it's a yeah. good game. Everything feels really good. Um, some of the and things mind I, you, EA is not paying us for this. We have no, no sponsorship with no, EA. No, no, no. We have no sponsorship. We have with, no dog in this race. So no, we just, are just telling our honest opinion. Yeah, uh, some of the things I like about it. Um, I think the vehicles are a lot cooler, um, easier to drive. Um, I think sniping is definitely improved. Uh, weapon customization is incredible. Um, you've got. Uh, just the way that shooting feels, it feels a lot more rewarding, especially when you get like a really good snipe in. It's an incredible feeling. Uh, the environments look great. The game generally graphically looks better than Battlefield 1 by leaps and bounds. Uh, it oh, seems yeah. to load faster. And the number one complaint that I believe both of us share, and you can you know attest to it as well with your little piece here on what you think is great in the game, but the UI like the menu, like matchmaking, all that kind of stuff, so much quicker, so much faster, so much easier. We found a couple of issues um, mm-hmm. a couple of times, but we're in early access, so I can't hold it against them in any way. This isn't the public version, so for all I know, there's an update coming out tomorrow, but we ran into like one or two periods where we've been kicked, um, but jump right back in. So it's not like, you know, I was stuck. But, you know, had a blast with it so far. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised and uh i was very very wrong about this because i was very much in the camp that i hated the beta absolutely despised everything about it um didn't like how fast everything was it was just a completely it, it didn't feel like battlefield now i will say the time to kill is much quicker um than previous battlefields or at least it feels like it um but it almost feels like it was a step from Battlefield 1 into Battlefield 5 that it was almost it almost felt natural like uh, the increase in uh, time to or sorry the uh, decrease in time to kill so it it you die very quickly but it doesn't feel off and it did for me in the beta but i actually playing it in the game this go around it it felt natural and it felt right um like you said, you know, the the vehicles and the environment is mm-hmm. just gorgeous and it, they they all play very well. Um all of the gunplay is amazing. I actually really really like the gunplay. Um mind you, I am not very good at Battlefield and I never have been, but <laughs> it it's fun. I enjoy Battlefield, but um I I think I think they actually after the beta, I think they actually listened, which um, is not something that uh, a lot of people are going to give EA credit for because EA gets a lot of hate. Or uh, sorry, EA gets a lot of hate, but I think they actually did. You know, uh, after this beta went and uh, I mean they had 139 pages of, of patch notes, so they they had to have done something. I mean. Uh, and you can read through them, so they're not just full of gibberish. But uh, I think they whatever they did, and it, some of it's hard to place my finger on. I mean, it, it's something felt differently, but at the same time, it felt right. Um, so yeah, I think this was a 
one that's shocked me for sure and uh i'm i'm happily going to pick it up so yeah and i haven't picked this up i still have a lot of trial left uh, like a lot of time in my trial but i am considering picking it up which is crazy because previous i'm like ah, i'm glad i escaped because you're kind of like oh shit like me and craig went half these on this and i'm kind of committed now and now yeah. i'm kind of path uh, i'm i'm like hey this is actually good and i can actually see us like playing uh, a decent chunk of this the only problem oh, i do yeah. have is too many good fucking games coming out yeah yeah like I, so many games and not want, very much time to play it i i'm a huge play like, data nerd on this but i'd love to see like just how much like how little of time people are spending on games right now because of how many fucking good games there are yeah like we're talking dude in two weeks a little over two weeks smash oh boy i'm so <laughs> fucking excited brody's body is ready <laughs> oh yes oh my absolutely. god no but like two weeks from now we're you know smash is coming out right and battlefield came out today mm-hmm. when this you know when this podcast goes live it comes out today Smash comes out. Fall 76 was like, what, last week? You were talking about good games. Don't bring that in here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Fall 76 came out. You know, Red Dead, a couple weeks before that. There's a lot of good games, man. And I'd Assassin's love to see. Creed Odyssey, Forza Horizon 4. Oh, my God. Spider Man. Holy shit. Crazy. Oh, here's your Metacritic update for Fall 76 2.8. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> I am oh, not. Man. He, I am not hearing shit about this game. No, I am no, not it hearing pretty much just a died. Thing. It just died. Oh man, that's that's a rough one there. Yeah, I'm not hearing a damn I, thing. I would I'm love not seeing to be anything. F- I'm not seeing gifts. I'm not I'd seeing love anything. to be, be a fly on the wall at Bethesda right now. I don't think they give a well, fuck. You don't think so? They have to give a fuck. They have to at least give a small fuck. Like, not a whole lot of fucks, but, like, at least one or two fucks. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, I guess know, they care because they, they spent money and worked on it, but I don't know how the fuck you fix this. That is, that's the worst like, Metacritic score I've ever seen. Here's some <laughs> it's crazy on a shit. giant triple A game. This guy wrote, Thanks for ruining my favorite saga of my life, Bethesda. You won't see a dollar by me anymore. Nineteen of twenty three users found this helpful. Yeah. I am disgusted with this is that this is what Bethesda has sunk to. Congratulations on screwing for game. Can't wait for game journals just to pile on in pile on pile on in an attempt to save the corporate overlord. Uh, Mythbusters actually proved that you can polish a turd. So seeing this, Todd decided to dump out the world's largest turd with a 100% functioning <laughs> store so we can all microtransaction that brown into a shiny, personalized, monetized pile of Fallout 4. Your own bum. My beloved Fallout, <laughs> where forth art thou? <laughs> that was a brilliant <laughs> review. <laughs> Oh god. Uh making an online follow game with the same engine from Morrowind meant to support dozens of players and is known for its bugs. What could go wrong? Dot dot dot. Seriously, take that fucking engine behind the barn and blow its brains out. <laughs> Time to put it down. Oh man. Oh Jesus. What a fucking dumpster fire. Oh, here's a really good one. This is the last one before we get into stuff. Uh, thank you, Bethesda, for stealing my money for a piece of shit. Uh, bugs can be solved, so I don't. Uh, I do not care about them. But the game is boring. Why uh, makes? Why does it make sense to do a quest? Where is the logic? Quest like protect area against some monsters. If there are no NPCs, why? Why should I? Cooperation with another online player just sucks. Uh, why shall I do a co-op if I can kill all monsters? Monsters by two gunshots. Uh, where the fuck is looting? Not appropriate level to equip. I don't want to equip. I want loot. <laughs> Building mechanism. <laughs> Trying to put a floor is like a mini game, but pretty boring. Hey, Bethesda, well done. <laughs> I'm applauding you for spending money on a useless project, which will die in the dark. As a big fan of the whole Fallout series, you just screwed up all key features and killed all reasons why we love Fallout. And do you think that the only reason for buying games are graphic mo- are graphic modes and brands? 
Uh, kick out of the door, Tom, with all of his stupid ideas. It's Todd. That's embarrassing. Uh, stupid ideas and sell the brand to somebody who will do the same for game. Will do the games for gamers and not egotistic, useless ideas. By the way, I want my money back. You promised game and fun. And I received a simulator of walking through boring but quite nice looking nature in the middle of Western Virginia. Uh, well, it's West Virginia. That's a state. Uh, without story, without quest, without NPC, and even worse, without reason to play. Uh, I maybe you're right. Maybe they don't care right now, but I bet they're gonna care the next time a Fallout game comes out because I think they really did alienate a lot of their fan base. We'll see. Time will tell. It's my fucking friend. crazy, man, that that went out. We called it. Yeah. Yep, we sure did. I don't I don't know if I'm proud of that, but we did call it. And here we are. This is what it's like. Speaking of um not really a shit show, but just some um kind of an interesting tidbit of news that could be taken in a couple different ways. Uh Sony is not going to be at E3 this year for the first time in the show's 24 years of running. Yeah. Um, some people are reading this as a show that PlayStation thinks they don't need mm. E3. Um, other people are reading it as the opposite, saying that they're basically taking a kneel on this uh, generation and just waiting for the next one. Um I don't know, man. It It's one of those things that they just kind of were like, hey, we're not coming to E3, and that's about it. Like, there's no, there's been no press release from them, no explanation. I mean, I guess uh, it's just kind of a an interesting one because they, I guess what, sorry, I take that back. They did have a press release uh, at the same time of this saying that uh, they will be hosting their own show but it is not going to be during or around e3 mm -hmm. so it's either going to be before or after or something but uh, yeah. we don't know for sure but um that's kind of it, that's an interesting one and in, in a couple different ways i mean are they are they walking around with the biggest balls in town thinking that they you know just i don't need this conference anymore even though so many fans and and all that look forward to this or I, I don't know what what direction you think they're going with it there buddy I'm excited are you yeah I think <clears throat> I think the only reason why they're doing this is is for big reasons um like this is the PlayStation's anniversary um coming up here in June or not in June but coming up in 2019 so I think um I think they'll do like a, a really cool I think they'll do a lot of awesome things um mm -hmm. I think everybody is honestly going towards um, or at least moving towards this. I think I would think that Xbox the reason why Xbox did an XO 18 is to see if they can do their own, um, you know, kind of kind of their own production yeah. of their own show. They definitely uh, can as long as they go back to Mexico again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, good God, <laughs> you tell diehard me, fans out there man. to yell anything for God's sake. <laughs> Absolutely. Fallout 70. Maybe you should get fucking the Bethesda team out there. <laughs> yelling for 76. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, you know, I, I think E3 is weird to me. Like, I've been to E3. Um, it is really cool. Uh, but from a marketing perspective, especially where technology is out with streaming, it doesn't really make sense to me that any, like, all, all the companies, like, come together. And I get it that they do their, you know, mainly they do their shit on, on different days. Um, yeah. But, like, they don't have to do that. You know what I mean? I think it's just kind of like a, an industry thing that people have, like, you know, respected for a little while. Yeah, it just became kind of like a tradition, really. I mean. Yeah, no, exactly. But I think, like, they there's more value in going off and doing their own, um, right. you know, presser on just, like, a, a random day. Um, yeah. To get all the you know all the press that they possibly can, um, and I, I think right. PlayStation's just doing it honestly for the fact that it is is the anniversary. I don't think mm -hmm. it's a we don't need these guys. You know, fuck E three, blah, blah blah. I think that they'll be there. 
uh, you know, in 2020. Um, but you know, I, I, I get it to an extent, like Nintendo's done it. Like Nintendo's already done this. Yeah. Like Nintendo doesn't announce shit at E3. Uh, they do they announced Smash at E3 this year, didn't they? Or was that a direct before? It was a direct. Yeah, because they showed gameplay at E3. They have a booth at E3. They do a presentation as well, it, but it's kind of like its own. But it's like a treehouse. It's, it's detached. Like they're just yeah, they're just playing stuff that's already announced. You know. Like no, they had a direct during it as well this year. Yeah, but that's not in like that's not in person. You know what I mean? Like it's not. Right. Yeah, they didn't have an in person presentation. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like they've already done it. Microsoft seems to be. You know, I think the fucking only reason why Microsoft actually has one during E3 right now is Microsoft literally owns the fucking theater <laughs> right. across from the Staples Center <laughs> and the Convention Center. So yeah, I mean it's no, it's no, you know, it's no bug in their ass to get going and and, and to do a, you know, to do a, a conference. But that being said, I still think I think every uh, again I don't see I think E3 will turn into showing. Uh, new games coming out. I think it'll always always do that for some of the smaller studios and stuff like that. But I really think you know E three turns into more of a GDC eventually, rather than this kind of like yeah. big announcement stuff, which kind of sucks because it's like that was kind of like one of the last. Uh, I mean, that's the shit that you read about as a kid, right? Like you get the oh, Nintendo yeah. Power magazine, um, or you'd get uh, like Xbox magazine. You read up all about like E three and all the cool shit that was announced, or like you know you'd watch the live streams, or you'd watch like uh, G four TV, um, right? And, you know, during that whole like couple days and watching the coverage of it. Um, but yeah, I think I think people got to get used to the fact that I think people like these bigger companies are going to leave. I mean, the, the amount of cost yeah. behind them, um, and just to get you know a couple hours of. Because uh, you're, you, here's the thing, you're fucked too. Like if if you're Sony and you announce a PS5, which I think totally they're gonna announce PS5 at whatever their event that they're gonna put in instead of doing E3, um, yeah. is I also think that they're doing it ahead of like on their own because they're gonna do it well before E3. Yeah, you think yeah. it's gonna be like what March, April time or what? Yeah, I think it's gonna be well before E3 because I think their thought is that Xbox is gonna show theirs at E3. Yeah, get ahead. And they want to be ahead. And right. unless you're going to, like, I mean, you have two things. Either you're going to announce it at E3 or anything else. Before. Like, if you're going to, if you're still going to be part of E3, but you're going to announce it beforehand, um, you know, you're not. Yeah. There's then no point. have at E3. Yeah, right? there's no point. I mean, I guess there's a point because you're showing games. But, you know, like, yeah. I, I, I think it's smart. Um, I, I don't know. Are they, like, they're not even going to have a booth. Like, they're not going to have any presence, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be not there at all, supposedly. So I don't know if you saw that image go around, but there's someone who like made this like fake map of E3, and it just had like Fortnite was like fucking like three quarters <laughs> of E3, and then yeah. it was, which is funny because the Fortnite like booth area last year was fucking massive. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw pictures of that. <clears throat> that was insane. But yeah, they had like a like three quarters of the floor map is like Fortnite, and this is just fake and then like the top is like nachos and then bathrooms <laughs> and then it was like a um square enix booth and uh gaming chairs for sale <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's great yeah so we'll have to see what happens i mean i'm sure yeah. microsoft is super fucking happy this is the thing though microsoft can stay now i didn't even think about this because you have yeah. nintendo doing the direct and Microsoft and Nintendo work together pretty well anyways right now from what we can see. Yeah. And Sony goes off from and do the their, outside, does their own thing. Good. You know, Microsoft is single-handedly, you know, has E3 to themselves now. Oh, yeah. Microsoft, if they play their cards right, they could go out there and absolutely fucking kill it. I mean, it, I know being the, the biggest talk of E3, especially when one of the big competitors isn't there, isn't really like the best gold medal you've ever had but if they go out and actually kill it like people who aren't even all that hardcore into gaming you know people who don't normally pay attention to like you know xo18 or something like that i mean 
even a lot of those people are watching E3 or watching coverage on E3 or even just summaries of each presentation or something because E3 does have this tradition and this name that it has built up. So, I mean, whether it's, whether, you know, it's as relevant now as it was, you know, uh, 10, 15 years ago or whatever, no, but, um, it still has its place, I think. And like you said, I, I think, PlayStation will be back in 2020. I think this is a one-year step away for the anniversary type of thing. Um, But it is interesting because it does open the door for either PlayStation to kill it by announcing early or for Xbox to kill it by just absolutely owning E3. And it also opens up a slot in E3 scheduling, so now someone else has a big window to step in and do a presentation if they want to. You know, then we we've seen that in maybe you know Google with their uh, the Google streaming that they're doing, and uh, may, maybe Google makes an appearance at this uh, this next year's E3. But who knows? I I think. I think it's going to be one of those things that will be very interesting, and I reacted to it kind of poorly uh, when they announced it. I was like, "What the fuck is this? Like, why, why wouldn't you be there? You know, even even if it's not beneficial for you, it is. Mm-hmm. I think to an extent, a fan thing at this point, because even though fans had just kind of been allowed to come back to E3 in the last couple of years or last yeah. what two years, I think it's like two um, or three, something like that. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, the amount of streaming and the amount of everything else that goes on to broadcast this around the internet. I oh mean, my God, yeah. the amount of people that watch it is absolutely fucking crazy. And I think, so I took it almost as a slap in the face when they first did it. Um, mm-hmm. But after oh, stepping I don't think back it's and kind of move. No, I don't I think, think so like either. I think it's like pick your poison, honestly. Right. Like it's either you stay I mean, and, and lose possible reach or you go and... Yeah. I mean, like, shit. Like, if they did this, like, last year and they weren't announcing a console, whatever. Right. But, like, if you're launching a funky console, like... E3 is traditionally where that happens. I just... I mean, well, yeah. And I just feel like you'd still get a shit ton of reach. Oh, absolutely. I mean, so. that's the thing. Like, I, I think E3 had its was its own platform and i think it had i think honestly e3 has a better reach than what uh an individual playstation convention has i think they're are they the, doing the a thing convention here, or, or not a convention i guess sorry i i don't know what they're gonna do i don't yeah. know if they're gonna do a giant you know live presentation or what but well, they did um, a weird like hybrid one last year anyways too where they had like half last of year it was in a, weird man had, like half of it in a church and then that guy came out with the fucking piece of bamboo blowing into yeah, it yeah that was weird i really really hated sony's <laughs> presentation this year oh uh, it was bad god but no i think this was one that you know after i kind of stepped back from it i i do see both sides i think but at the same time i still think it's a weird move and i think it has the potential to um, not really hurt them, but I, I think a lot of people are kind of pissed off about it. it just for tradition's sake, if nothing else. I mean, and it's just kind of weird. Um, uh, like you said, you know, if they weren't announcing a console, whatever, but I don't know. It's, it's just an odd one. Then it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Well, and without I feel like any never coming back. Like, oh, I... you changed your mind already? No, you I already like... said you I feel like they're never coming back. Yeah, I take it. Yeah, back. yeah. Well, take it I, back. Well, because it's my thing. Like, if you're gonna do this, like, and you're gonna do, it when you're gonna release a console. Again, you're gonna do it before E3. The only reason you're gonna do it is because you want to announce it before E3, right? So you're not gonna right. want to be part of it. But if you just wait it anyways, like E3 is a prime place for the reach of it. And to your point, like, there's fucking Nintendo fans that would have been, or like Xbox fans that just wouldn't have been waiting there for Xbox news on E3. And if Sony yeah. announced a new console, everyone would have still went over and fucking looked at it. Right. Like, absolutely. you're going to sit there and be like, oh, fuck it. I'm Xbox. Blah, 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 blah. I only play <laughs> Xbox. No, you're going to go take a look at it because it's a new fucking console. So yeah. if they do this, I don't think they ever come back. I think they're done, man. Some shit must have went down. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Well, when I was there last year, there was fucking PlayStation stuff everywhere. 
like That's fucking so strange everywhere. They had Spider Man on the convention center, like you know the famous yeah. you know banner oh, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that shit. Yeah, so it was like Spider Man on there. They had a shit ton of like they had a lot of booth space for Sony in there. Like they had a whole MLB batting cage thing outside for MLB the show. They had like a little bit That's of crazy. like a shop set up for the fucking Daily Bugle for Spider Man. They they're selling fucking PlayStation Nikes. Like Jordans, Jesus, <laughs> that's crazy. So it's cool, but it's like all oh, that's gone now. Yeah, and it's like something I, must have fucking went down, or like maybe for all we fucking know. Uh, and like I went as industry, but also like I think everyone also in the industry goes as a fan, no matter what, especially if it's your first oh, time yeah. going. Right, and like. I don't know. Like they must, have, they must have fucking. I mean, they must know something. Nobody just makes this right as a guess. Like it's, they must have a very lockdown educated guess as to like, hey, people fucking look at this console. All they have to do is tease that there's going to be a fucking like you know put a silhouette of a box or something for the next console mm-hmm. and then the date and they'll probably get a shit ton of people streaming it. Oh yeah. Will it yeah, be as much be as three? I have no idea. This is this is such a strange one to me. Like I, I'm I'm almost in the same I don't know. I don't know if they'll return or not. And I think the I think that will determine or um be determined based upon how this all goes. So if their presentation or direct or whatever they end up having does exceptionally well and seems to do better than what you know e3 has done for them in the past which is still kind of hard to judge based because it all depends on what you announce right um but if it does well for them i could see them maybe not coming back but if this does shitty if this goes very poorly and is received very just just awful by fans do you think they'll come crawling back and want, you know, uh, E3 to take them back? Or how, or you think they're going to uh, be too prideful to do that? I don't think they're coming back. Even if they wanted to come back. I mean, it's not really Sony crawling to E3. I think it's more E3, you know, wanting that money. That's a lot of fucking money they lost. Bro. Oh, well, yeah. But, I mean, if this doesn't do well and, you know, E3 is showing that it has – a better reach. You don't think this will do well? Like, I think it's, I, I think it's the right year. The it's, it's like the wrong. It's wrong to do it, but it's I'm, also right. I'm to not do saying it. it's not going to do well. I'm saying, what if it doesn't do as well as E3 would have done? Because I think E3's mm-hmm. reach is going to be much, much larger than what uh, their own conference or presentation like, would be. What if they're like going for that? that shit where it's like okay cool so like announce the ps5 like before e3 and then the whole time during e3 when like xbox announces its new console or shows it off or something like that um then it like it's all just a comparison the whole time because that would happen right like if one whoever fucking goes first they're Mm -hmm. gonna come up when the next console gets announced afterwards so if playstation goes first the entire time for Xbox, you know, we are all the journalism like outlets for fucking games and stuff like that are just going to talk about what are the comparisons, what are the differences between two systems, you know, what are the exclusives, all that kind of stuff. So it's like they're still tapping that reach in my mind. Like they're still going to get that. Like there's no way that yeah. IGN is going to sit there on the E3 show floor and Xbox going to compare the two, right. right? But at the same token, I mean, they're going to have to come at, at their own presentation. They're going to have to come in pretty strong and actually have. And some stats to go off of then because yeah. I, if they don't have shit and they just do a quick little teaser trailer you know like we'd been talking about like the the intro of some of the shitty like 2000s action movies where it goes inside the gun like, <laughs> yeah Boom. now if, if they do some shit like that and they have nothing to compare it to no benchmarks no nothing for this console like no. that's going to be an issue i think they're shot i think they'll you bring think it. it's going to be a full yeah, blown i think they'll bring that son of a bitch out on like some you that know son of a bitch it'll <laughs> it'll fucking float out of a table some table come out it'll open up and it'll come fucking flying out of that thing yeah and then and it's going to be 699 <laughs> Uh, probably some bullshit like that'll go down. Why not? Oh, I bet you it'll be the same price the Xbox One X is, and the PS4 Pro is. I bet you that's the new standard of pricing. Five hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. 
I bet mm. you. I guarantee you. Yeah. Well, the Xbox One. Uh, I mean, the unless the original Xbox skew? One did. Unless this is the first console where they come out of the gate being like, hey, and there's a 4K version and there's also a normal version. Yeah. The Xbox One released at 500, too. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah, I, I, down I don't doubt, I don't think that's out of their realm of possibility at all. I mean, uh, we, we've already been there. So. Want to see? I think they'll hit the ground. I, I think this will be like one of the, their strongest. Um, if they don't, if they're not strong with it, they're dead in the water. Irregardless. Yeah. Because, uh, like I've said before, Microsoft is like a smell fucking blood in the water and is ready to just fucking come at them yeah. and just kill them. It, it's weird for me because I would, would probably consider myself an Xbox fanboy in a way. Um, but I try to not be biased because I actually do like my PlayStation. I, But first and foremost, I mean, I had the Xbox One X, or sorry, the Xbox One on release. I've bought most of my games on Xbox One. I buy pretty much exclusives on PlayStation. And so it's, I don't know. I I almost wonder if part of it is me just not wanting to be, like, excited for this. and But I also think that Xbox is doing a lot of things for gamers, and mm-hmm. they seem to be more centered around gaming and the the community of gamers and don't get me wrong they're still a business they still want to make money but you know you got your adaptive controller you got the cross play the playing nice with nintendo and and all, while all this is going down you still got sony over in the corner like no i'm not sharing this that you know like I'm just finally doing the cross play after being begged and begged and begged for you know a, a damn near a year like i i just feel like I feel like this next generation Xbox is going to further push themselves as the the company that's actually for the gamer and um so I at the where we stand now I mean obviously we're going to be paying attention to it I mean aside from being gamers and mm-hmm. uh we we run a podcast on this shit so we we clearly <laughs> have to to pay attention to what's going on no but, way. um I think for me, as it stands now, I mean, PlayStation's going to have to do a lot to get me to buy their console on release. That's fucking I, crazy. I'm because, definitely buy, planning on... But you bought the PlayStation 4, though, because... I'm going to, like, fight that, because you bought the PlayStation 4 because of Spider-Man and God of War. Yeah. So what Because if they I wouldn't play those with, two games. Yeah, so what if they come with exclusives on that? I mean, is that enough yeah, to sell Yeah, I'll buy it later on in the series... Or later on, but I'm not going to buy it at release. But also, I guess the buying. problem is, too, is that you're going to buy it, then you're not, it's not going to be, like, your main device. No, no, PlayStation will, I can pretty, unless Xbox really fucks something up, which I think this is probably the worst generation they're going to have for a little while, mm-hmm. um, I I don't think PlayStation will ever be my main console. I, I've always loved Xbox, I always use Xbox, I prefer Xbox, and mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, as far as the first console I'll buy from the next generation, it's... I, pretty much without a doubt an Xbox unless PlayStation comes out at the gate with something absolutely fucking crazy. Can I make a guess here? Sure. Go ahead. I guess that sometime in April I think I think PlayStation slowly teases shit. So I think they tease in like March, they tease in April, they announce in May, they show it off in May, or they literally show it off during E three, but not at E three. And like just save Which money. Which would be a shitty not, thing to do, considering yep. they said they're not doing that. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, okay, maybe they maybe they show off in May, and then it launches December third, two thousand nineteen, on the twenty fifth yep. anniversary of of the PlayStation. That very well could be. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't, right? I mean, that's holiday season, holiday time. Yeah. You know, that would make sense. Or maybe you launched it a little earlier. I have no idea. Maybe Black Friday stuff. But yeah, I think um be super interesting. We'll be covering the shit out of it, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We'll be absolutely. covering the shit out of E3. That'll be a crazy week for us. So, yeah. fuck, we might be there. We don't know yet. Yeah, especially if we go there, it would be even crazier. <laughs> Regardless, yeah. it's fucking crazy. But mm-hmm. yeah, I know. So we'll have, to, we'll have to take a gander at everything. And uh, I think uh, I think they'll do a good job. They have a lot. That's the thing, though. Like, they, they're all, they have the shittier end of the stick. 
right? Like, what does Microsoft really have to lose here, right? Like, they, they just they have a great subscription service for games. They're finally getting exclusives. They're building that repertoire of, of studios to create those exclusives. Like, mm-hmm. they come out like every month or every other month, and exclusives going to come out, right? The writing's on the wall for that. So, and they're the lesser selling console, so they have nothing to lose. I mean, they're just yeah. They just need to do mildly better than the last E3, which isn't hard to fucking beat. Um, right. But Sony, like, you're Dude, talking I, almost 100 million fucking units. Like, you got a lot to live up for. That's 100 million users of your platform. So you got to make sure that, you know, you carry those those people over with you. So, you know, the first step of that is, in mitigation of that is, uh, announce it first. Be the first one out the fucking gate. You know, get those buy-ins. Get the pre-orders going. Get people, you know, st- taking $200 out of their wallet and going, okay, this is for the PlayStation when it comes out, you know, like yeah. or saving room on their credit card and be like, okay, cool. This is when, you know, December 3rd, 2019, buying the new PlayStation. I think, I think Xbox is going to take back over this generation. Oh, really? I think it's yep. going to be even. Really? I think it's going to be a very I weird think- generation. I think it's going to be like 50 fucking 50. And then the next one, I think Xbox takes over. I think there's still too much time. Uh, um, or at least I think it's going to be like 50-50 for like, you know, a considerable amount of time. And then I think yeah. after a couple of years, I think Microsoft takes over just with the exclusives. Um, I just, I don't yeah. know. I don't see. Man, it just feels a lot like of PlayStation. fucking love PlayStation. No, I know that. That's not what I was going to say. I, I don't see PlayStation doing anything new. They're not doing anything exciting to me. They they jumped into the yeah. VR thing, whatever. But it's done well. I, I, I think from everything we're hearing from Xbox and things, I feel like they're they're pushing things and going in the right direction. And I think, uh, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I feel like place or Xbox, like you said, you know, I, I could see it being dead nuts or Xbox being a little bit ahead, but mm-hmm. I think I, this is going to be the generation that Xbox makes a hell of a comeback because, yeah, they oh, got yeah. their asses beat no, this generation. Sure. I think like is, three years into it or something like that, you know, Xbox pulls ahead by leaps and bounds yeah. just because of the studios, you know, all the studios working on oh, different yeah. projects. Because that'll be about the time you'll, uh, two, two to three years, you'll probably start seeing the uh, mm-hmm. all those exclusives that these right. studios have been working on. Yeah, and oh, I'm going to be fucking teased fucking for sure. It. You know, they'll oh, be fucking yeah. teased on the first, like, announcement of the new Xbox. They'll fucking show, here's right. a new game, and then, like, you know, pull a Kingdom Hearts, and it's not coming out for seven years. But, you know, that's besides well, <laughs> But, yeah, but right. play, PlayStation just, like... PlayStation fans are fucking hardcore, bro. Oh fuck yeah, they are. Which is why I sit there and go, like, I, I get your. I, I think PlayStation has never been that great at PR in comparison to my Microsoft. I think Microsoft right. has had such a shitty keynote presentation on the Xbox One when it launched it was that bad. They, yeah, they just got a head start. <laughs> it was very bad. Yeah, they got a head no, start. No, I think. They shot themselves right in the foot on that right, one. Right, yeah. Sure. They gave them the fucking keys of the kingdom. Yep. And those, it's but. very hard to get back because, like, I mean, people play the fuck out of these games. And, like, you, oh, like, yeah. for your instance, right? We're friends. We, we play on fucking Xbox all the time. We don't play on right. PlayStation. If I got, got a PlayStation, like, would we? Mm, maybe. Maybe. I, dude, I. But I everything's use my also s- additional cost. Like, I don't want to fucking pay yeah. for online. I use my PlayStation pretty much for single player games, just to play yeah, the games that I yeah. didn't have. But and you know I, we're fucking five years into the generation, and I finally just now picked up the PS4. Like, that's that's where Is I it think five or six? like, yeah, five or six, yeah, yeah six right. years. Yeah, okay. you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, that's, that's where crazy. I think. Uh, even for the next PlayStation, like as far as we stay, sit now, like there is no exclusives that are going to be that they have announced that I am so excited for that I'm going to go out and buy a PlayStation for. Not a single one. I, Last of Us Two is cool, but I I haven't even played the first one yet. So whatever. Um. So it would be years before you see something that would maybe get me to go ahead and buy a PlayStation. That's just where I'm at. I, I, I don't know. I think I, I am excited to see what they announce. Just as a gamer and as uh, someone who creates content, I mean, I, I think 
uh, that's exciting. That's something that's cool. I want to get excited with people who are excited for it, but um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. This will be a very, very interesting uh, uh, year, I think. This is going to be crazy for sure. And the next year, the next year is going to be even crazier. Yeah, and Sony's hinted that they're going to be you know, hosting more than one event this year. Yeah. So that's awesome. So we could see like you know just something exclusively on PS5, probably in May, if mm-hmm. I had to uh, guess. And that's what a lot of other places are saying. Um, but yeah, and they're saying that uh, PS4 backwards compatibility will be included in the PlayStation 5. So that's awesome. Has that been confirmed? I heard no, there was rumor of that. It's been hints but... and rumors and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. God, if they don't but do that, Sony patents, people are gonna shit all yeah, over there's, them. There's there's patents that have been privately, you know, filed and stuff like that, like right. you know, which includes a title in it, you know, remastering by emulation. So it's, uh, I think it's gonna be happening. Yeah, we so. will see, my friend. We will have to see, but yeah, I bet you they announce it in May, and I think it launches in December, and I think the fucking new Xbox, I think the new Xbox doesn't launch in 2019, I think it launches in 2020. Like, the next generation, or the discless? Yeah. Or the no, dry, the, disc next, drive the next generation. Okay. I think Xbox comes out later than the really? PlayStation. Yeah, I just don't think they're ready. Ah, whew, that that wouldn't be a good move when you just spent the last generation behind. No, I know. Giving them a head start. I think their hope is just the games. Yeah, I mean the games is what all they sells the fucking box. Uh, yeah, kinda. I well, mean, you uh, wouldn't bought the PlayStation because the two games. You know, well, yeah, it's yeah, okay but if, so it, late if it takes a couple years. Yeah, it's still sell though. I mean, yeah, that's fine, but uh, it. When your console comes out first and people are ready to move That's on to the enough. next generation and yeah. nobody or in only one company has the next generation out, you already have a hell of a head start because people are ready to yeah. move forward. Oh, yeah. You get the latest and greatest thing. Yeah. No. Right. Because no. some people aren't as dedicated to either Xbox or PlayStation. No. They no, don't they give a fly. shit. They just want the next console that does awesome yeah. shit, right? No, absolutely. So, no, we'll have to see. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I just don't think... I don't know. I have a hunch that it'd be 2020. I, I hope Xbox doesn't... <laughs> Oh, they I gotta so get too. that out before, or else they're uh, they're gonna be playing catch up again. Mm-hmm. At yeah, least for a couple years. You but know? hey, we sat here what six years ago, and everyone said, "Oh, consoles are dead." Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's true. Fuck. Yeah, what who the rid- fuck knows anymore? <laughs> fucking ridiculous statement. Um. Anyways, what's not a ridiculous statement? This podcast is brought to you by Audible. That's a truthful <laughs> statement. Uh, you can get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com slash diggity. Get access to over 108,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. I personally recommend listening to Creativity Inc., which is an inside book at uh, John Lasseter and the Pixar gang and the brain trust behind Pixar and how they inject creativity into their business and move forward um, as an innovative team and company. So head on over to audibletrial.com slash diggity to get your free audiobook download. It could be Creativity Inc., could be Poetry of Donald Trump, could be anything. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and you get a 30-day free trial as well. So head on over to audibletrial.com slash diggity. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Oh, my God. Sorry. What was that? <laughs> I accidentally opened something on my phone. Oh, uh, shit. So a video. Follow us on video Instagram uh, at Diggity Podcast. We actually just reached 1,000 followers on Instagram. So super proud moment. Uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, you can follow us on Xbox. My gamer tag is Maple Jeff. Brody's yours is Luscious Brody. Uh, apologies to whoever has Lucius Brody. Uh, leave a review for the podcast. Helps us out a ton. Helps us do two things. One, helps us get more people into the Diggity community, listening to the podcast. And two, it allows us to read your comments from viewers like you. I feel like PBS. What's up, bitch? <laughs> um, those comments help us make a better show. Uh, you may say, Jeff, Brody, um, I've never heard two guys talk so much about uh, when someone might have a fucking press conference before <laughs> or after E3. I don't like it. Hey, that's cool. That's great. That's that's called fucking feedback. What will Brody do? Brody will probably tell you to shut the fuck up. Me? <laughs> I'll probably agree. Uh, but we'll listen to it, and that's what matters about feedback. Um, and, uh, yeah, 
thanks to everybody uh, who listens to the show. Uh, means a ton to us. Thanks to everybody who's been following us on Instagram and actually having conversation on Instagram. It's kind of pretty fucking crazy uh, after you, like, you start something up like this. And for the longest time, it's like dead air on Instagram. Like Brody sits there and posts something on Instagram and it just it gets liked and you're like, yay, people like it, but no one's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and now Finally, there's like conversation. Get a conversation yeah. yeah and now there's like conversation it's like oh good civilization <laughs> go, oh go god on. people i don't know how to talk to them yeah so it, it 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 helps out a ton and uh you know we're forever grateful for that and uh yeah like we said you know keep an eye out uh we got to start discussing youtube stuff you can follow us on the youtube channel diggity gaming on youtube um we're gonna probably start getting into youtube pretty heavy here after thanksgiving season we got to strategize sir um, and like we said, probably first live event will be, uh, or live stream will probably be, um, for the game awards. And we'll just kind of discuss stuff about the game awards and, and, and have our predictions down. It'd be like Oscars night, <laughs> <laughs> but way cooler right? Not, and not lame. Cause Oscars night sucks. It's stupid. All right, guys. Well, that's it. So, uh, I don't know. Go listen to some other podcasts. <laughs> Until Thursday <laughs> when we come out with another show. So, see you guys later. Peace.